Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are some fantasy romances I love that are on Kindle Unlimited. I know a lot of people like myself who love romance books have Kindle Unlimited, are subscribed to Kindle Unlimited. If you don't know what Kindle Unlimited is, it's a subscription service through Amazon. I think you pay like around $10 a month to get like unlimited access to like a bunch of books. So um, I'm a ride or die for Kindle Unlimited, by the way, love it. And I know a lot of my friends are too. I read a lot of books off of Kindle Unlimited every single month. I also love fantasy books. So I thought I would recommend fantasy books that are out there that I think are really good that are on Kindle Unlimited that I think you should check out. First is The Midwinter Mail Order Bride by Katie Wilde. The heroine of the story is a princess from a different land from our hero. So the hero is this big barbarian leader who overthrew the king to this specific area of land in this fantasy world, okay? People know him as like a brute, a barbarian. He'll like kill people to get what he wants. When in actuality, this big gruff giant dude was saving these people from this horrible tyrant that was controlling them. And they are eternally grateful. They know who he is. But people outside of their area don't think of that. Like they don't know him. Um, So the heroine is from a different different land, right? And she hears about this barbarian guy who needs a wife. He doesn't need a wife, by the way. His like inner circle people are meddling and telling him he needs a wife. So they're putting out like letters and applications for wives for him. He doesn't know this. He's not for this. Anyway, so the heroine's like, I'll go apply to be his wife basically. But in actuality, I'm gonna kill him to save his people. Cause it looks like he's being a barbarian for like his people, right? He's being a tyrant. I'm gonna save him, like all the people and uh, kill him and then become the queen. But then something happens on the ride there. I think she either gets drunk or drugged or something along those lines. And she can't control her tongue. Like she cannot close her mouth. And so right when she meets the hero, she's like talking about how stunning he is, but then also how like, oh, the plan that I have to kill you was just gonna like be even harder. And he's like, huh? You don't actually wanna marry me? Like, you're not here to actually marry me. You, you just wanna kill me. And so he then puts her back in the carriage and goes with her to bring her back to her parents, essentially, to bring her back to her kingdom. And along their journey, they end up falling for each other. They get into a lot of shenanigans. Things happen between them. Also, like, people are trying to kill them as well. So there's a lot going on in here. I love this one. I feel like it's so underrated and more people need to pick it up. Another underrated one is Prize of the Warlord by Rebecca F. Kenny. I also want to mention this does say third book in a series. These books are complete standalones. I'm pretty sure, like, they have nothing to do with one another. I've only read the third book in this series. The heroine of the story is the daughter to a very powerful man in this fantasy realm. She ends up getting kidnapped by our hero. Our hero is this barbarian warlord whose people actually lived on the land that her father just stole. He decides to kidnap his daughter and says, oh, if you want your daughter back, you're gonna have to give us our land back because that's our land. And through her captivity, she ends up falling in love with him, falling in love with this giant barbarian brute man. There's also great disability representation because you don't really see disability or chronic illness representation in fantasy books like at all. All. The heroine has, I believe, a dairy allergy and what I assume to be IBS based off of what I'm reading because obviously in a fantasy book, I don't think they would say IBS. I don't know. But in this book, they didn't. So she has tummy problems and um, she has to eat a very specific diet, which can relate to you, girl, can relate. Next, I have a whole series for you. The series isn't finished, but the books don't relate to each other, if that makes sense. Like the books are about different couples, so... I feel like they're like standalone books. Um, so this is the Aspect and Anchor series by Ruby Dixon. Yes, Ruby Dixon writes fantasy romances, if you did not know. And all of Ruby's books are on Kindle Unlimited and she primarily writes alien romances, but she has some fantasy ones that are so stinking good. Okay, so you have the main three books in the series. I don't own book number three because personally, it's not my favorite one by her, um, but these are the first two. This is Bound to the Battle God. And then the second one is Sworn to the Shadow God. This one, uh, wait, first of all, this one <laughs> um, is Enemies to Lovers, Force Proximity. This one's Force Proximity, Hades and Persephone vibes. This series takes place in a world that is not ours, but the heroines, okay, the heroines of these books are from our world and they get sucked through a portal to this fantasy realm and they have to become the anchors for these very arrogant, troublesome gods. That's all I will mention. They're so good. They're slow, burn, fun, like quest filled fantasy romances that I love. Okay. And then these three novellas also take place in this fantasy world, um, but they have like nothing to do with each other. But they're novellas that are really good. Honestly, like I 
sometimes love their novellas more than the full length books. Like it flip flops, I feel like. Anyway, so I'll mention these two. These are the two special editions from Book Bonanza from last year. Um, so this is The King's Spinster Bride, which might be my favorite Ruby book ever. I don't know. I hate choosing favorites, but it's like top three for sure. Um, this is actually a little novella that takes place before book number one in the main series. Um, so this is a heroine about a heroine who isn't from Earth. Like this book fully takes place, all three of these novellas fully take place in the fantasy realm. Both characters are from this fantasy world. There's no humans from Earth, okay? So the heroine from this world, she is the daughter to a king, but this king has gotten in some trouble with these people called the Cyclope, the Cyclope. Um, they're not actually Cyclopses. They're just human people on this fantasy world that only have one eye because the other because one of them was taken out you know so her father gets in trouble with these people and they overthrow him and his kingdom they end up killing um her father because he basically waged war on their people by kidnapping that ruler the barbarian ruler's son and throughout this whole like war the heroine actually takes care of her enemy's son because he's this like innocent child and people want to kill him in retaliation for what his dad is doing. And she's like, no, we gotta like keep him safe. He's a kid. So the little boy's dad ends up killing her dad and is like, I'm taking over this kingdom. I won't kill you. Basically as a thank you for taking care of my son. Cause her, cause the son like advocates for her. Like, no, don't kill her. She saved my life, but she's banished from the land. Okay. And so she ends up growing up in this convent on the outskirts of town, like outside of the town. And it's years later and this hero is that little boy all grown up who is now the ruler of the land and ever since he was a little boy he like knew that this woman was meant to be his so he goes out to find her and convince her to be his wife and they have to do these traditional marriage customs that his people have and it is so hot it is so hot okay like i'm a blush from it they're so good like this book is small but it packs a big punch. It's so good. And this is The Half Orcs Maiden Bride by Ruby Dixon. Oh, this is so pretty. I also forgot to show off these books because like, look at that. Look at that. It has a step back. It's beautiful. The step back's also on the back cover. And then this is pretty too. Like this, these books are so pretty. Okay. And then um, this one, The Half Orcs Maiden Bride is this one. And then this is the step back for that one. So a heroine of the story is from a family full of like beautiful daughters. She thinks that she is the ugly duckling of them all because she's really tall. No one has vied for her hand. Like no one's like pursued her. Um, so she really wants to be a wife. She wants like all this typical things that happen when like you have a wife, she wants a kid, basically wants the white picket fence in like a fantasy book, right? Then her father comes up to her one day and is like, hey, I found you a husband. Let's go to him. We're gonna go to him. And so she follows him there and is shocked to find out that her father arranged her to marry a half orc man because orcs are scary. Um, but this orc is the sweetest man ever, okay? And um, he's like, okay, you don't have to marry me if you don't want to. I can obviously that your father did not tell you everything. Like he did not tell you who I am. So if you don't want to marry me, that is totally fine. But if you do, like I will make you the most like treasured piece of my life, treasure part of my life. And they end up getting married and they have some marriage rituals as well really good and then also their servant to the spy day by ruby dixon which is a book i feel like you need to read after book number one like the big chunky book number one because we meet the heroine in that book specifically and she becomes the anchor to three spy day gods they are gods of past present and future and she is the mate to all three of them but they're all basically the same person they just have three different he just has three different bodies because it's past present future it's hard to describe. So um, this was really fun as well. There's also the Between Dawn and Dusk series by Jamie Schlosser, but I really just want to talk about book number one because it's my favorite. This is about our hero he is from a fantasy world. He is a fae and he ends up falling through a portal into our world and falls into a river. He's blind though. He cannot see. He's been cursed since a little boy and he can't see. And our heroine in the story is a little girl whose family owns the property where the river's running through and she ends up saving him. And after that point, they become like best friends and they see each other every day the heroine can't wait to see him every single day however she sees him every single day but he only gets to see her once a year so the time difference between the fantasy realm and earth are completely different so he's basically like growing up every single day like a year older it's taking him a whole year to see her whereas she can see him every single day i know it's complicated but you get it when you read the book then this book kind of mainly starts from when the heroine i think is 19 and she goes to tell the hero they're like best friends at this point like, hey, I can't really see you anymore. You won't be seeing me for a few months because I'm going off to college. Like the next time I'll be home is like in three months. And that's 300, like over 
and that is like 90 years for him right and he's like oh no that's not happening so he ends up taking her and pulling her into his world and there's also this like curse and this fated may destiny that he has I really enjoyed this one. There's also other books in the series too. And then I also do really love the prequel novella. You can read this one before or after reading book number one. I read it after. Um, but it's about the hero, Kyrian's parents falling for each other, their fated mates. This is a very like Romeo and Juliet-esque type of story, but with fated mates involved because their families don't want them to be together, but they're fated mates. Ooh, one that I absolutely adore. If you love a little more monster goodness in your fantasy books, I really recommend a Soul to Keep by Opal Rain. This one is about Rhea, who is our human woman. She lives in this fantasy world where humans are kind of like dying out because demons are running rampant, okay? So demons, the way that they get bigger and more powerful is by consuming humans. And so they're ravenous for them. And so the only way uh, Rhea's camp of humans has been able to survive is by giving a bride, I think every year, every five years, I can't remember, um, but a bride, every now and then <laughs> to this dusk walker creature who's not a demon but he's a different creature all on his own basically we give him a bride and in thanks he will put a protection ward around the village guess who's the human bride sacrifice this year Rhea. so um orpheus ends up taking her to his home in this forest that is full of demons and like also trying not to eat her because she smells so good so he's also trying not to eat her <laughs> but also like keep her safe at the same time. All he's ever wanted his whole life is a companion, someone to share life with. All of his other companions in life have either died, run away and died, been killed. He's accidentally eaten a few. So <laughs> I absolutely just love this book. It's so good. You have this big Euro monster man who's a total absolute softie. One that was recently added to Kindle Unlimited that I'm so excited about is Lord of the Fading Lands by C.L. Wilson. I think all the other books are in Kindle Unlimited as well. And these got new covers that I feel like will definitely be more marketable for other people. I know that some people are put off by the original covers, but I think they're iconic. Okay, I think they are. I own all of them right there, but I do feel like the new covers will definitely be more marketable for typical fantasy romance readers because I don't know, the vibe just is different than when these books, the original ones were published. This is the romance between Eliseta Baristani and Rain Taran Soul. All five books in this series follow them specifically in their romance. And I have yet to read the last one because I am terrified to know what happens. Like I am scared. So that's why I haven't read the last one. Okay, I know I need to. Okay. Rain is the most powerful fae to like ever exist. He ends up finding his fated mate in a human named Eliseta. And she's like baffled. She's like, aren't fated mates supposed to be equals in every way possible? You are the most powerful fae to ever exist. And I am this little human woman who was adopted because I was abandoned in the woods as a child. Like what is going on here? Um, anyway, it's their romance spanning these books and like there's this common villain happening there's like side characters that are very entertaining um but this villain is probably the most scariest villain i've ever read in a fantasy romance like he terrifies me he is so scary and also another reason why i haven't picked up the last book because he scares me and i'm really worried that he's gonna do something that I'm not gonna like in the last book. A book that came out earlier this year is Ballad of Sea and Sky by Madeline Elliott. This is the first book in a duet. I don't think the second one is out yet. I think it comes out later this year. But anyway, so our heroine of this book is a Selkie, kind of like a mermaid, and her people are at war with the Sirens, which is what our hero is. He is a Siren. Sirens, by the way, in this world, like aren't mermaids. They're like creatures that have wings. Anyway, so her father and her betrothed end up kidnapping the hero and putting him in the dungeon. And the heroine's very curious about him and his kind and goes to the dungeon to like see who and what he is, like just to figure him out. Um, she's never seen a siren before, um, but then he ends up kidnapping her and flying out of the jail cell with her. Um, and it's kind of like captor captive on both sides. So this one is very entertaining. The banter was a plus there was a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end so i definitely can't wait for the next book to come out but i really loved this one because it had like all this magical lore in it and different fantasy creatures that i've never really seen in a fantasy romance before okay i have the last three this is the bridge kingdom by danielle l jensen i feel like this one is very well known um you can also listen to it i think on audible plus so if you have an audible subscription you still, you can listen to this book with your membership for free um but our heroine has been destined her whole life to like become a spy and then kill her husband for a neighboring kingdom so she does just that in this book um, she becomes the spy to her husband from a neighboring land. Then when she gets to know him and his people more, she might realize like, 
am I doing the right thing? So there's this one and it's a duet. Then I have Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. This one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Our heroine Sorsha is a midwife in this fantasy world and her father is dying. There's people dying of this illness, of this plague. And she goes to this witch and the witch tells her, okay, I'll give you the, the antidote for this plague basically. If you go to this faraway land and find me, this cast out unseely prince. So she does just that. She goes to this island. It's kind of like filled with people and creatures who have been outcasted from their kingdoms. And the hero is kind of like the king of it all. He doesn't really want to be king, but he's been outcast from his people um, ever since he got in a fight with his brother and he was cut by his brother and geodes started growing out of his skin and his people are very revered for like perfection and they find him grotesquely ugly after this and they're like uh you cannot be our prince you can't be our future king you gone and so he's basically banished from his people so she goes up to him and is like i need you to come back to my land with me and he's like no i don't no i don't so it's her like trying to convince him to come back to her land to help save her people when he is just this broken damaged man and so she ends up sparking life back in him and the last one that i have to mention is really good this is make me burn by tiffany roberts this is a siren demon romance. Okay, so our hero in here is this demon creature, right? He's a demon. Um, and he's kind of raving havoc in this fantasy world. And the rulers of the world, kind of like, I think like the fates or whatever, are realizing, oh, he's doing a lot. Like, he's in some trouble. He's kind of like breaking the law or whatever too many times. They're like, we've given him too many chances. So they end up taking him and putting him in this island that strips everyone of their magic. Like, if you're on this island, you ain't got no magic anymore, like you're done. And so he does not know what to do. He's like, all I've had all my life is my magic. How do I live, how to survive without magic? Um, and then one day he ends up seeing our heroine out in the water and she is a siren, she's a mermaid. He ends up seeing her perform this magic. And he's like, how could she have magic? And so he goes to investigate, trying to figure out who this woman is and why she has magical powers when no one else does on this whole island. Anyways, yeah, they end up falling for each other. It's super fun. I love it. I need to read more books in this series as well. Anyway, so you have a those are fantasy romances that are on Kindle Unlimited that I really enjoy, that I totally recommend. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any fantasy related emoji in the comment section down below, like a fairy, a mermaid, whatever you want to do. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.